Welcome to Second Time, the show that takes a look at the issues going on news. ESCOM held a briefing on its winter plan and delivered some fresh insight into the current operational and financial state of the utility. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the outlook for the system as we move into the high demand winter period? Well, it's amazingly positive given from where we have come from in December and earlier this year where load shedding seemed to be on the cards for most of winter. In fact, the initial prognosis was for load shedding for 31 days. But subsequently, you know, we've had this COVID-19 pandemic and uh, uh, ESCOM has done some opportunistic maintenance during this period. Obviously, we've seen a massive fall off in demand. And a combination of those two factors has allowed ESCOM to stabilize its system quite remarkably. And it's now projecting only three days of possible load shedding during the high demand winter period. And it will also coincide with a fairly aggressive maintenance program. So the system is looking a lot more stable, but I think the stress is that because the system has been neglected for so long, it remains unreliable and unpredictable. So while three days of load shedding is the current prognosis, and hopefully we won't have any if they're able to manage things better, there's always a risk that there could be major unplanned events, and therefore we could, there's always a risk of descending back into load shedding. ESCOM has also set itself the target of moving full tilt into its reliability maintenance plan from July 1. That's correct. You know, we had this term philosophy maintenance for many months, which I think confused many South Africans. So this has been rebranded as reliability maintenance. And this is going to now officially start depending on where South Africa's lockdown levels go to. But the sense is that there's going to be easing in the coming weeks and months. This will now be formally initiated as a project of ESCOMS from the 1st of July. Now this, unlike the opportunistic maintenance, which happened during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown period, which deals with those, uh, those elements of the plant that you do need to take down the plant, but they're not really sort of long-term outages. They're not outages that are going, you're going to rely on for multiple years thereafter. These are really proper scheduled outages, proper maintenance. And ESCOM is now gearing up to enter into this period up until the middle of next year where it really pushes ahead with these long-term outages to try and reverse this unreliability of its aging fleet and to get it back into a state where the energy availability factor is not sub 70 percent and therefore with the unplanned outages that we've been seeing we've said that that combination of low uh, energy availability factor from the fleet together with the partial load losses and unplanned breakdowns has led to the load shedding risk. So this is a major new initiative to try and get the plant into a better working order. In parallel, the restructuring and financial balancing acts continue. That's correct. The number of balls in the air, is, it's quite amazing to see. You know, um, Eskim's got these big operational plans and these are really licensed to operate plans because and not only about uh, sustainability of the fleet, but also the environmental performance of the fleet, which has been dismal over the last few years. So trying to claw that back. But at the same time, they've got this overhang of a major restructuring effort that has to be undertaken in terms of a, a roadmap that's been given to them by government uh, for unbundling. Uh, it was made clear today by Andre de Rey, the CEO of Eskom, that uh, ESCOM's vertically integrated structure is really not fit for, for the future, fit for purpose, that the rest of the world has moved on and South Africa has to move on too in terms of that structure, but it's a complex restructuring effort. And what they've done to date is created divisions, uh, generation, transmission and, uh, and distribution with uh, specific managing directors and boards and those are now operational and in, in place, but the bigger unbundling still has to unfold and the eventual legal separation. Uh, they're still targeting the end of the 2021 year to try and get that all done. That looks very ambitious though. And other plans that have been put before parliament recently suggest that this could take longer than that. 
at this stage are sticking with the end of 2021 date for that restructuring. And at the same time, uh, the big issue of Eskom's debt and its uh, balance sheet being not for properly capitalized has to be dealt with to have any chance of a sustainable business electricity supply industry in which Eskom plays an important role in future. So there's a lot, a lot to do. Uh, we, there, we are gaining more visibility of the planning and it looks much more credible than it has in the past, but uh, the devil will be in the implementation detail. How has ESCOM been affected by COVID-19 and how does it plan to recover? I think COVID-19 has been both positive and negative for ESCOM. Obviously, highly negative from a demand and revenue perspective um, uh, because it's been, uh, we've seen demand just about uh, collapse uh, as we went into hard lockdown. It is in the process of recovering now. So that is a, a, an added financial burden and means that they need to sharpen their cost-cutting pencils even more. And uh, that is a difficult ask. But on the other hand, it did create definite space to focus on you know, opportunistic maintenance, things that could be done uh, fairly quickly um, uh, so that plants could be brought out should demand recover. And that has helped stabilize the system, there's no doubt. And it's also given Eskim a lot of confidence to set new targets around partial load losses to limit these to around 2,000, which would be a, a dramatic improvement. It sounds like a lot, it is a lot, but it would be a dramatic improvement from where we've come from. So uh, it has had both positive and negative, but overwhelmingly in the end, COVID-19 is negative for all businesses, including Eskim in South Africa. And we're gonna have a long road and journey ahead to try to clue ourselves back and get into a normal way uh, we get jobs starting to create, be created again and the economy moving again. So overall, a negative impact for South Africa and therefore Eskom, but they've definitely made virtue of this time and made some progress on the operational stability front. That's the second take for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news and notes. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.